Exercise 1, Jig and Fixture Theory. Chapter 3, we discuss degrees of freedom. And once we're completed, once we complete going through this PowerPoint, we're going to go ahead and work on exercise 1, which will show the 3 to 1 method via simulation inside SOLIDWORKS 2019. Let's begin. The objectives, first of all, we need to secure a part, uh, and then we're going to look at some of the primary objectives in doing that. We're going to talk about the six degrees of freedom, and then we'll follow it up with exercise one and bring it into SOLIDWORKS and download some files and uh, put this uh, very simple sample fixture together, and then that will conclude this. First of all, securing a part. In manufacturing, when materials are being processed, essentially, you have to make sure that they don't move while they're being cut or measured or whatever you're doing inside that process. And so that's why we need to do it. And the primary objectives that we talk about here, first of all, is accurately positioning the part. Now, with this sample part, we're not going to focus too much on the accuracy or precision. We're going to really look at removing all six degrees of freedom so the part can't move. So what are the six degrees of freedom? First of all, the first one, or the first three we'll talk about, are movement or travel, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, we have the Y direction, and we're, just, we're not going in any necessary order perhaps here, but we have Y up and down in this case, or that could be Z up and down, I suppose. Uh, and then we have X, and then we have Z. Then we have the rotation of that that we have to focus on. So there's the rotation of the Y and the X and again the Z. Now we're going to take a look at the CAD 321 method of securing this. And as you can see in the lower right corner, this is essentially just a mock-up of a quick fixture that I threw together. Um, not necessarily how you would really do it. It's more just an exercise that we could put together and see the theory in action. So you could go to the Britannia1.com forward slash jig dash 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 fixture dot html and find these parts. Download the exercise one parts. They're in a variety of formats. The SOLIDWORKS parts up there are only good for 2019 or newer. So if you can't use those, feel free to grab the iJust files or the Parasol files. Unzip them onto your desktop, and in there, there should be a fixture plate, dowel pin, and sample part. And what we're going to do is replicate those fixture plates. And there's also config configurations of the, con the fixture plate, which uh, there's a half-height version of it, and we'll take a look at how we can use that and put it together. So let's begin. Here we could actually see the completed assembly. The green are the dowels, and these are our fixture plates as we saw in the PowerPoint. And this is our sample block that we're just going to use. It's a three by five by one inch thick block. And imagine you wanted to drill that hole in there, and so how would we lock it in? Now we're not going to lock it in with clamps and things, but in reality that's what you do end up doing. But uh, this is more just a practice of adding the three to one method. So we're going to start with a new assembly. So go to File, New, and select Assembly, and hit OK. Now, if you have the parts already open, you'll see them listed here. If you don't, you have to go to Browse. And so what I'm going to do, um, actually I call it the Machine Base here, and that's actually the Fixture Base. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the green check mark, and it will drop it in and it locks it in, it actually fixes it. The very first part you drop into SOLIDWORKS is typically fixed, and the way we know that is the little F and parentheses. If you don't have this fixed, then you have an issue with degrees of freedom later on. So let's uh, continue on. Now we're going to go ahead and add some dowels to this. We're going to eventually have a fixture plate in the back as well as on the side that will add some additional dowels, but right now we could just add a few over here. So let's go to Insert Component, Browse, and we can find the dowel pin 1 inch, 
and you'll see there it is. Now, let's go ahead and move it close in proximity to one of the holes, like perhaps uh, right over here. And just click to release it and hit Escape. Now, you could go to the Mate tool. The Mate tool is a manual way of adding mates, and I'll show you how to do that first. So we click on the Mate tool, and essentially what the Mate tool does is it removes degrees of freedom of parts to uh, attach it to other parts. So all we're doing here, we're going to select this green face, which now just turned blue because it's selected, and this hole right here, if you're looking, we're about uh, hole number three from the left and two from the top. So select the surface of the hole. You can select edges in certain instances, but we're not, going to, we're not going to do that right now. So go ahead and just select the actual surface of the hole here, and you'll see it will move in position, and then you can hit the green check. Now we want to be able to lock that down even further so it's uh, attached to the bottom surface. So we could rotate, and the middle mouse button on your wheel, I should say on your mouse, which is the wheel, if you push that down, hold it down, and then move your mouse up or left or right, you could see it will rotate dynamically. You could also use the arrow keys on your keyboard for this. But once you get to where you see the blue surface, that's your dowel pin. Let's go ahead and we're still in the mate toolbox. Notice uh, by hitting the green check or enter one time, it keeps open the mate tools. And so we could just go ahead and select this surface to this surface. And just to let you know what's happening here, those of you who don't are not familiar with SOLIDWORKS, it's automatically establishing a tangent relationship. Now, if you were to make dial pins of your own and you made them perfectly flat, uh, you might get an option other than tangency. It might be actually coincident. And be careful of that with this lesson because this lesson actually we want to simulate as best as we can the rotation. And if we go with coincident, it'll be flat face to flat face, thus it wouldn't actually move. It automatically locks out that degree of freedom that we're looking for. So hit the green check. And so basically there's a little bevel on that surface, so it went tangent. All right, now we're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark for the mate tools because what we want to do is replicate that and make uh, make three pins here, or actually attach a third, two additional pins. So by holding the control key, the control will automatically copy as you drag off an instance of this. So hold control, hover your pointer over this green surface and depress the mouse button and drag it to the surface that you want it to go into. And to the right way pointer you'll see actually two little cylinders in alignment. That means it's aligning those. So go ahead and release the mouse button first and then go ahead and release control and it should have made a copy. And here you can hit the green check. Now once again, if you rotate and look to the underside, go ahead and select that blue surface right there to this surface. Um, actually, since we were using the Alt key to move it earlier, we actually have to go to the Mate tool up here. Or we could use the Alt key again, hold Alt, hold that surface down and drag it to this flat surface underneath. And you'll see Tangency is automatically established. Hit the green check. Now you could have gone to the mate tool and selected that blue face to this face as well. If you have trouble with that, feel free to delete it and try it again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drag another instance off. I'm going to hold control, grab this green surface and drag it over here. And this time it looks like I'm getting it a bit deeper in and that's fine. Just release the mouse button first, then release control once you see the instance is copied. Hit the green check, rotate it around, and we could, we'll do it the manual way over here. We'll go to Mate Tool, select this blue surface to this flat surface here, and it will align tangent again. All right, so now that we have those three set up, we could bring in our part. So go to Insert Component, and we should see the sample block and hit the green check. Now the sample block locked in and it automatically came and fixed and I might have accidentally selected something. So I'm going to right click on that and you have an option to float it. So select float and I'll drag that up. Oops. And we could actually go up here to 
move component, but hit the little arrow underneath, and you'll find rotate. Now click and drag that to where the, the lettering is face up. Hit the green check. Now hit your space bar on your keyboard, and that brings you to this view that we see here with the little ice cube. You could go ahead and click on isometric right there. And just so we're all on the same page. And you'll see now, it should look similar to mine. Now remember, you could go back to Move Component or Rotate Component. Preferably Rotate Component. Move Component, really, you just click and drag. You don't have to go specifically to that. But let's go ahead and mount this on those surfaces. So you'll see there's a green surface on the underside. Go to Mate and select that green surface. Now select any one of these blue surfaces. Let's start with this one right here. And unfortunately, it must not have taken that first one. So let's rotate again, select the green surface. And there we go. It should move it now onto that surface. Hit the green check. Now you'll see we still can rotate. So we've essentially removed some of the one degree of freedom there, but um, it's, we still have to lay it down on those three. So let's go and we'll do it another, another one here. So make sure you go ahead and select this. The next pin, don't select the same one you picked earlier, or else it's not going to work. Go ahead and select the green surface, and it will rest down on that. Hit the green check. And remember, you might have to rotate so you can see underneath there. And again, let's go ahead and select the green surface. It turns transparent, don't worry. And click on the last pin that you haven't yet selected. And this will lay it flat. Hit the green check, and now if you move this, you'll see it remains flat, so we move its ability. Oops. Uh, actually, it, it appeared that it was lifting off, and I thought I missed one of those, but no, it's locked on planar to that surface. So essentially what you're seeing is we're removing, we've removed the degree of freedom, in this case what would be maybe Z, and so that it makes it difficult to... All right, now we have that yellow surface that we're interested in. But before we could do that, let's bring in another one of these machine based, the fixture base. So hold control, and you could actually grab one right here from the feature tree and release the mouse first, and then release control. Now, if you click on this, actually, I'll try double clicking or right click you'll see there's a default, but if you hit the little arrow to the right of it, we have what's called a configuration. Go to half height, and then hit the green check. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move this over. We are gonna use an edge in this case. We want this to be on this edge. So let's go to mate, select this edge so it highlights in orange, and select this bottom edge, and it will align, hit the green check. Now you can see you could rotate it up, but we actually want it specifically locked in or perpendicular to the, the plate, the first plate we dropped in. So click on this face here, rotate, and select this surface right here. Hit the green check. Finally, we need to remove this degree of freedom. So select this face and made it to this face. And again, just remember, I'm still in the paperclip mate tool. So if you accidentally hit escape or something, you might have disabled it. You just have to click on the paperclip up here again to continue on. All right, so let's move this over here. And let's put in another dowel. Now, for this one, we're going to need two dowels. That's why it's called the 3 2 one because in order to lock it into this face. So we could actually, just from the model tree, again, grab these. Or perhaps we could drag them off of this. And let's see, we're going to go ahead and put them up in, in this row here. So we're going to have these, this one here and this one here. So the second and third from the back. So grab this green surface, hold control, drag it to the hole. And when you see the preview, release the mouse button first. See those two little cylindrical uh, items to the right of my pointer, that means it's locking in concentric. Hit the green check, and now we could rotate that around, and we could hold Alt now 
Release Control, make sure you have Alt selected. Grab that blue surface and drag it to this surface here and hit the green check and it should go tangent. Now we could use this one again. Hold Control, grab this one and drag it to this hole. Release the mouse first, then release Control. Hit the green check. Let's go ahead over here, Alt, hold the Alt key down. Grab that surface and drag it to this surface here. Oops. There we go. Mine was a little slow in the uptick, but um, looks good now. All right, so now we want that yellow surface to contact both of these. So let's go to the Mate tool, select the yellow face, and let's go ahead and select that blue face right there. Hit the green check. You can see it's still not locked in. There's still some rotation there. So by selecting the yellow face once again to this face here, we now only have one degree of freedom left. As we drag this, you can see it doesn't move vertically or widthwise, but it is moving in this direction here, which would be according to this RZ direction. So let's move that over here and let's bring in another instance of this. And we can do that by just holding control, grab the machine base and drag it over here, release. Let's go to mate, select this face, and then you can select this face right here if you like. Hit the green check. Now select this face to that face and this underside face to this face. Now notice I didn't use an edge this time. I'm just trying to show you different ways you could mate things up. And every time, essentially with those mates, we are removing the degrees of freedom. So it's not just a focus on the part. It's actually all these parts there's degrees of freedom that we're addressing. Okay, now let's uh, put a dowel pin in like maybe right here. So hold control and grab that green dial right there and drag it over here when you see it enter the hole and you can see the symbols to the right of your pointer release the mouse first and then release the control key and notice when i refer to mouse when i say click i'm always referring to the left mouse button i will be sure to tell you the right mouse button actually twice as you are selecting it um, so anytime you need to do that Hit the green check. Now let's go ahead and rotate around. See that blue surface there? Hold Alt, drag it to this surface right here and release it. And hit the green check. Now we could see we have a blue face that we still have to align. So go to the Mate tool, select the blue face on our sample block, rotate and select the blue face on that pin should automatically go with tangent and now we have removed all the degrees of freedom if we try and drag it you'll see to the right of my pointer says the selected component is fully defined it cannot be moved so we were able to apply the theory within a simulation and see how that works and hopefully you understand now the concept of the degrees of freedom and how to remove them for fixturing and this concludes this exercise.